first question. Leslie, we know you are a great Star Wars fan. So when you envisioned the Acolyte, what was the what was important to you to include in this story? It was important for me as audiences were brought into this world that they both felt like the it was a clean entry point. They didn't necessarily need to know um, Star Wars backward and forward in order to enjoy it, but that fans of the franchise and of the EU and of the High Republic books would recognize a lot of um, things that they already knew and that they expect from this type of media. So I wanted to do both, honestly, when I approached this. And I hope that, I hope that the show captures both of those audiences. Mandela. How did you approach playing two characters, May and Osha? What was the most challenging aspect of that? Ooh, um, well, my approach, well, I really felt like I needed to know the characters inside and out if I was going to be oscillating between them. And so I wrote really long backstories for both of them and had it as kind of like a Bible for myself that I could always reference so I could understand like their core struggles, which I felt like were already written in such a complex way by Leslie. But, you know, I would just go through the scripts and pick apart subtext so I could really understand like what drove these two people. Um, and physically, I thought about uh, yin and yang a lot and and what and I thought that would just be such a fun concept to play with, you know, because yang is light and it's masculine and 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 yin is dark and seductive and feminine and the interplay of those two things, I just really wanted to physically differentiate the two characters. So you, you kind of always knew who you were looking at. Um, the most challenging thing was scheduling. <laughs> that was the hard that was the hardest thing because you know I'm playing two characters and throughout a day maybe I'm switching back and forth between them and then also trying to find time to learn all my stunt choreography not just for one of them but for both of them and yeah that was I mean I was just always busy yeah, yeah. I felt that for you yeah <laughs> yeah the whole time I was like I don't know how she is doing this but she <laughs> is doing it it was astonishing to watch not just your performance but yeah the the mental and physical energy that it took to execute both those performances was superhuman. I still can't believe you did it. I mean, I can believe you did it. Stop. It's true. Stop. <laughs> Leslie, how did the decision to, to design practical sets and not use CGI come about? Mm -hmm. And why is why was it important to you? It was important to me to utilize um, practical sets, puppetry, um, uh, uh, you know, um, costumes uh, that reflected the the High Republic, not just Star Wars media we'd seen already for the Jedi, um, to utilize lightsabers that were not, that could still be used in combat, but still have a, a, a light emitting from them, which actually I didn't realize, but is really difficult to do because in order to have the lightsaber light up and still get the light off of other people's faces, they're very, very heavy. Mm -hmm. And the amount of work that you guys were doing with the lightsabers, they needed to be um, they needed to be lighter, like they are in the prequels, yes. in order to do that type of sword fighting. Mm -hmm. But they were all put in later. The the lights were all put in later. So mm -hmm. we had to basically make a hybrid of a Something new lightsaber. Yeah. So those types of things, they were a bigger challenge. But I think that that the the finished product visually um, recalls a type of Star Wars I grew up loving but also the type of Star Wars I was interested in making and seeing. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mandela, tell us about your fight training and the weapons you learned to use. Do May and Osha have different styles? Yes. <laughs> they have very different styles. And I think also Osha's style is kind of in a nascent place, yeah. which makes, it opens up a, like a, a big expanse for us in terms of where Osha goes and where she can go. But, um, with May, I mean, I started by just um, my my stunt master, my kung fu master and stunt trainer. His name is John Cheng Lu, um, and he was absolutely wonderful. And he started me off with um, there was a circle on a cardboard box with a cross and an X, and uh, I would just I would just trace them over and over again until the tape in the box would be taken away and then I would be able to do those movements in the air without any sort of guidance. And then, you know, we practiced punches and kicks and like roundhouse uh, punches and, and kicks. And 
just slowly developed until like I had enough of a foundation to do the stunt choreography, pick up the stunt choreography quickly, which ended up being really important, you know, because I was two characters. Leslie, tell us about casting Amandala and why she is perfect for the role. (laughs) (laughs) She's perfect because she's perfect because I, of course, had been a fan of hers. um, But the hate you give, I've given this answer before, but the hate you give was something where I felt like her performance was not only. fully realized, um, supporting obviously the overall narrative, but that culturally it was also um, reflecting uh, um, like um, an environment and a climate. So it was like a performance that transcended just the narrative that was being told. And I think if you're gonna do Star Wars, you need someone who can do that. You need someone who's not just thinking about the performances and the fight choreography, even though you did all of those things beautifully and very analytically (laughs) and very thoroughly. Um, But I think you also knew how to have that 4D experience of being part of this story, but are also the larger story and what it means to so many people. Last question for both of you. What does it mean to each of you to be part of Star Wars? Oh, <clears throat> I just hope I make my dad proud. Yeah. He, he passed away recently, so I don't know. I, I When I started working on it, he was so proud of me and um, uh, he had dementia. So as I worked on it for the po- following four years, I sort of you know, with dementia, you lose them before you lose them. So um, by the time he passed away last September, we were just putting the finishing touches on the show. And I felt like, I've just felt sad that he never got to see it because he was somebody that I, I really, you know, introduced me to Star Wars. So I felt like it was a big achievement that I, I uh, wanted him. I guess he is still seeing it yeah. in some ways. <laughs> um. That was a dark. That was a that was a deep answer. Probably not what you were looking for. But that's, that's so the truth. I'm proud of her. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm proud so of her too. I love you. Um. Yeah. Um. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> it try means to follow that, that up. Yeah. Go ahead. Try. It means it. It me. I mean, Star Wars. I think why it's so universally loved is because it has so many spiritual messages. And so many messages around what it means to be a person, how hard it is to be a person, um, how we're always faced with these challenges that um, um, can compromise maybe our, our set of ethics or what we believe in and, and staying true to what you believe in can be so challenging. Uh, and there's so many forces in the world that are so much larger than us that are hard to contend with. Um, but ultimately, if you surrender uh, and you surrender to the force that is larger than you and you, you let that guide you, um, you honor yourself and the people around you. Yeah. Okay. This is for Daphne. How does it feel to be part of Star Wars? Um, it feels like a huge honor and I'm, I'm just really excited and happy and grateful that I was even considered for it. I can try this. Oh, gosh, it feels um, it feels like entering in a legacy, uh, being a part of Star Wars. It feels like you're part of a generational history, which is what I'm most excited about. Mm. To have my father turn to me and say that he's excited mm. to me being something that he remembers watching as as a young man is um, it's it's the best gift. But it's also terrifying to live up to it <laughs> in the best ways. Manny. Ooh, it's uh, it's all of the feelings, but definitely one of excitement. Um, pride mm-hmm. uh, is is a big one, especially taking on something that feels completely new and and different. Um, yeah, like so so proud of, of of what of what we've been able to accomplish with the Accord. And Manny, tell us a little bit about your character, Kimir. Um, my character, uh, Kimir, is a former smuggler trader who kind of finds himself in this uh, broader story with um, May, one of our main characters, and having to help May and her master with their mission. 
um, trying to avoid the Jedi and and yeah, just accomplish um, what maybe the dark side has in store. Charlie, what makes your character your tick? Mm, what makes your tick? <laughs> um, JK, you know, poking at my sides. No. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he is, it's, it's his desire to be best, to be good. Not, best is not, it's not, an, it's not an outcome which any Jedi should be yearning for. Um, he, he has a desire, though, to be of use, to be of service, and he wants to fulfill it in the best ways that he can. But that is a difficult challenge. And Daphne, tell us about your character, Jackie, is like. Um, Jackie is a young Padawan to Soul, played by the incredible and incomparable Lee Jung Jae. Um, she is a very talented Jedi. She is very overachieving. She's a perfectionist. She's very hard on herself. And she's just very curious and excited and um, is taken by surprise uh, with Osha and who this fascinating young woman is. Maddie, what did you think when you first stepped on set? Um, is this a dream? Um, what did I think when I first stepped on set? I, I was pinching myself because it, it felt surreal, you know, to, to, to hop onto a set that's first of all, practical, and that has, you know, all the elements um, that pays an ode to, like, the original trilogy. Uh, yeah, it felt like it was just an incredible special feeling. And can you describe the set where Kimir hangs out? Sure. Um, you first meet Kimir um, and an apothecary, uh, basically just, uh, for lack of a better term, a store or a... <laughs> A store that a corner store that has a bunch of potions and trinkets and um, tools, uh, mainly for his smuggling practices. Charlie, what was the lightsaber training like? And uh, how different was it from having toy lightsaber duels when you were a kid? <laughs> how do you know I had toy lightsaber duels? Uh, who did? Um, did you? I did, yeah, of course, yeah. I had him as an adult. <laughs> I did miss today, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, our lightsaber training was some of the coolest aspects of being involved in this project. Yeah. I will say I coupled it with the force training, which I felt like the two were so mirrored. Um, or at least they coexist in the same. Um, I was very eager to figure out how to be the best uh, saber wielder mm. from the get, which is very yord. And I think it ended up with me being very frustrated with myself and Daphne, the dear friend that she is and just great human being, gave me some love and support and helped me kind of find my own my own grounding within it, which was was really uh, invigorating, but so cool, so cool, the stuff that we learned and that we now have in our back pocket. Yeah. I know I can it's pick up a stick trick. off the tree and <laughs> throw some stuff yeah. around. Yeah. And Daphne, tell us about your makeup and your prosthetics and describe the process to get on it every day. Um, the makeup process for Jackie was completely transformative and I honestly enjoyed every minute of it. It was, it was a bit intense. I'd have to get up every morning at like, 3, 3.30 a.m. and then I'd drive into work and then I'd I'd be with my wonderful makeup artists, um, Jeremy and Rob, who designed the makeup look and, and just it sort of brought to life. They're such incredible craftsmen and it took, mm -hmm. we got it down to an hour and a half, which is really impressive and it consisted in, uh, we did the horns, we did a bald cap, we did a prosthetic over my forehead and then we'd like put the wig over it and then I'd have to get like airbrushed in color and it was it was really just enjoyable in my hands and I had to have like a special manicure. And it was it was truly just so important to have that as an actor for the character. And it, to be fair, I did every day when I wrapped, I was ripping horns out. This was a pretty funny box standard thing. But that <laughs> apart from that, it was really it was a really fun thing to have on. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be for the three of you. Uh, Manny we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, what did you enjoy most about this experience? Ooh <sighs> Oh, uh, the food. <laughs> um, oh, no. we did have a great chef. Yeah. Oh, um, Louis. 
I mean, just, <laughs> just uh, everything. I think the, the thing that I love the most is that it became a very much, I've talked about this before, a, a collaborative experience. Mm -hmm. um, again, Leslie, super collaborative, uh, very much team mind frame. She delegates tasks as opposed to like being a, a dictator and just like trying to figure out everything on her own. And um, for on my end, I was able to create a character with her and um, yeah, it just it just makes it so much more special when you're able to build something with the showrunner from the ground up. Um, yeah, again, so much so much pride in it. Um, I think piggybacking off of what Manny just said, it, it was so incredible the team on this production in front of the camera and behind we had the most incredible crew mm -hmm. and truly we couldn't have done it without them they were just such a huge support system to us as actors i think and just yeah so it was it was amazing to get to work with such incredible talents and i just feel like we had a really good we had a really good thing going mm -hmm. as as just like, like a little community on set and also of course just the fact that now we get to say that we were part of the Star Wars family is mm -hmm. huge and it's kind of forever. I think my my favorite part of the funnest part, aside from both what Manny and um, Daphne were mentioning, which are incredible, more specifically even though is walking onto the sets and it's even walking onto the sets with the costume. Mm -hmm. The costume and just at the raw sense of me having fun you know, having a robe and a lightsaber and running through a fern gully, basically, yeah. Ky like in Kofar and Chimere's, um, Chimere, I'm sorry, Kalnaka's, um, all the Ks. Let's <laughs> stop saying names. Kalnaka, Kalnaka's <laughs> land, I think basically. Let's... It's, but it is, it's like one of the coolest, it was a whole set of mm. Ferns and trees mm, and was, water and I mean there was frogs living in it. It was it a whole environment. It on, literally yeah. did. Yeah, Being able to just explore those kinds of things in costume with it was like this. You can't. It's just like little kid fun, you know. Yeah, awesome. that's where we had most of our adult lightsaber battles. Yeah, it's <laughs> professional. Yes. <laughs> All right, that's it for the questions. How do you feel about becoming part of Star Wars? Star Wars apprentice is how many days all keeping up this year? 아, 너무 영광스러운 일이고요. 어, 어렸을 때서부터 스타워즈 팬이었고 그리고 또 항상 그 스타워즈 시리즈들이 나올 때마다 즐겨 봤고 그냥 팬 중에 한 명이었는데 제가 여기에 출연을 한다라는 것이 아, 처음에 정말 믿겨지지가 않았고 지금도 역시 그 촬영을 다한 이 아콜라이트를 홍보하고 있다라는 것도 사실 아직까지 이렇게 현실적으로 잘 느껴지진 않습니다. 하지만은 어, 이 아콜라이트를 정말 열심히 준비했고 정말 최선을 다해서 촬영했고 그랬기 때문에 그 많은 기억과 추억들을 어, 홍보하면서 이렇게 많이 얘기할 수 있는 이 기회마저도 정말 소중하고 감사한 일인 것 같습니다. Yeah, I feel extremely honored to be part of the Star Wars mm -hmm. franchise. And, you know, I was a Star Wars fan from when I was a little boy that it feels really unbelievable that I'm even sitting here now promoting it um, with the Acolyte. And um, we uh, work so hard on the show, um, work so diligently. So I am hoping that, you know, the audience is able to see that. What type of training did you do to prepare for the role, and can you wield a lifesaver now with confidence? Um, training을 임하셨나요? 그리고 이제 감성감을 쓰시는데 자신감이 있으신가요? 어, 트레이닝을 촬영 전에 어, 두달 전에 어, 와서 들어와서 하라고 해서 저는 사실은 그 액션 씬들이 많은 영화들을 어, 그 전에 많이 했었거든요. 그래서 아니. 뭐 얼마나 어려운 코리오그래피가 있는지는 몰라도 나한테는 두 달은 굉장히 많은 시간이다. 그래서 나는 한한달 정도면 될것 같다라고 얘기를 했는데 아 절대 안 된다고 두달 먼저 들어와서 어 액션 씬을 이제 다어 연습했으면 좋겠다라고 해서 이제 들어와서 처음 이제 그 액션 그 스태프 스태프 분들이랑 그 트레일러 아니 그 뭐죠 데모 영상을 네. 이제 보게 됐는데 
와 너무 첫그 액션 시퀀스가 너무 그 코레그래피가 아름다운 거예요. 그 동선이라든가 그 둘이서 하는 어떤 그런 장면이 너무 멋있었어요. 그래서 그 장면들을 정말 다 완벽하게 하려면은 솔직히 두 달보다도 훨씬 더 먼저 와서 했어야 되는 거 준비했어야 되는구나 라는 생각이 들면서 그러면서 이제 첫 액션 장면 두 번째 세 번째 네 번째 그 뒤로 훨씬 더 액션 장면이 파워풀해지는 파워풀해지는 그 어, 프리비주얼을 영상을 봤을 때는 큰일 났다 이거 두달 가지고 모자를구나 <웃음> 라고 하면서 정말 열심히 연습을 했고 그 다음에 라이트 세이버를 가지고 또 연습하는 장면에서도 실제로 불이 들어오는 라이트 세이버를 가지고 연습을 하다 보니까 훨씬 더 뭐라고 그래야 할까요? 그 현장감이 있다라고 해야 될까? 그 감정 자체가 좀 다르더라고요. So um, we had uh, two months of training um, before we started shooting the act light, and you know I've done a lot of action in in the past in my career, so I thought oh, one month should be enough for me. Uh, but when they showed me like a previs video of the choreography, I thought, wow, this is so incredibly beautiful, um, from the blocking to the movement. And I also thought, oh man, two months might not be enough. <laughs> um, and I thought, um, you know, the action scenes become more and more um, complex. more powerful as the episodes continue so it was something that I had to practice really hard for um, in terms of the lightsaber training um, we were able to do some training with the light actually coming on so I think that really added to the realism and allowed me to focus um, on the acting on set awesome. what did you enjoy the most about this entire experience 음, 이 경험을 하시면서 가장 즐거웠던 순간이 뭐가 있었을까요? 아무래도 어, 감독님하고 어, 이 에콜라이트 전체 이야기와 그 다음에 소울 캐릭터에 대한 이야기 그리고 또 다른 캐릭터들하고의 이 관계성에 대한 이야기를 나눈 게 가장 어, 재밌었던 추억인 것 같고요. 어, 여전히 어, 저는 레슬리 감독님이 이 시나리오를 너무 훌륭하게 잘 썼다라고 생각하고 본인이 상상한 그 여러 새로움과 이 스타워즈 유니버스 안에서 어, 기존에 있었던 이야기를 굉장히 잘 어, 혼합시킨 게 아닌가라는 생각이 들면서 정말 진짜 너무 어, 노력해서 잘쓴 시나리오인데. 역시 촬영도 잘 어, 마친 것 같아서 어, 지금으로서는 뭐, 너무 어, 기분이 좋습니다. Um, so I think um, it really has to be my favorite memories, like all the countless conversations I had with uh, director Leslie about the story, about the character, and about the relationships. And you know, when I read the script, I thought it was so fantastic because it um, combined an element of the freshness of Leslie's take, but also melted into uh, the world of Star the Star Wars universe. So now that we've like finished shooting, I really feel so uh, grateful to be have been a part of it. That's a cut. Jody, what attracted you to the role of Mother Anasea, and what do you like most about her character? Um, okay, so what attracted me most to the role of Mother Anasea was, first of all, just knowing that I was going to be in Kogonada's hands, because really, like, that's how I found out about it, is he called me and he said, so I'm going to do this Star Wars TV show. <laughs> And I was like, Star Wars, Koganada. <laughs> Actually, Koganada, Star Wars. It was just like, win-win. <laughs> and then, you know, he began to tell me about the character. And, and he, you know, we've had so many conversations over the course of our, you know, creative relationship. And he was, he started speaking to me about some of the things that, like, we had spoken about, you know, in my personal life as a mother. And I just really was interested and excited at the opportunity to play this powerful witch mother, which I really feel like is um, me. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, describe your character, Vernestra. What could you relate to about her as a person? Uh, Vernestra Rowe is an elder Jedi master, revered. Um, she has found herself in this position 
this sort of liaison position between the Jedi and the Senate. Um, she's over 116 years old. And that's really what I could relate to the most, being 116. Just kidding. Um, you know, I loved how straightforward she was on the page, how um, she just was, I think because of her age and because she sort of feels as if she's seen it all, she's just, um, you know, taking care of things. And I just, yeah, I really liked how economical she was with her energy and <laughs> her time. Um, and I love the way the character develops over the course of the season. Jody, tell us a little about Mother Anasea's motivations and her powers. So, <clears throat> Mother Anasea is, she represents, and she's a very powerful figure, and I guess I'll start with her powers. Um, she wields the Force, but not in the same way as a Jedi does, or a Sith. I think what makes her powerful, and that's what kind of drew me to her as well, is that she is seeking to protect her family. You know, her coven, the witches of Rendok, their way of life, which is in many ways threatened by the Jedi because it doesn't exist in, in like, if you would say that there's sort of this uh, uh, binary of like what makes sense for a person who's using the force, they don't exist in that space. And so because of that, like with any unknown, right, it's a threat because we don't understand it. And I think she knows that. And because of that, she's fiercely protecting those around her. Um, her powers of creation are unmatched. Um, and that also makes her someone who needs to be very careful about what she's teaching and how she's protecting those around her. How does it feel to be part of Star Wars? What did you enjoy most about the experience? Uh, I'm, oh God. <laughs> I am so excited to be a part of the show. I am so excited for people to see what Leslie Headland has made. Um, as I've, you know, as I came onto the project, I, I obviously know about Star Wars and have seen everything and I, but I think going to celebration is what really, you know, just brought home what this means to people. I found it incredibly moving. I could not stop crying the entire weekend, even just pulling up to like the stadium we were in, uh, families and, you know, all dressed up together. I just started crying. So, um, yeah, it means a lot to be a part of the universe and uh i'm so excited for the premiere tonight <laughs> yes um it means a lot to be a part of this i mean and what makes it mean the most is seeing how much it means to so many people across generations uh across cultures across any sort of defining characteristic about a human being you'll find a star wars fan in every walk of life mm -hmm. and i think that's something that makes it so special um, and then to get to create a world that is adding something um, to the universe that people haven't necessarily seen before that's really exciting um, I just can't wait for people to see it I think we have I know that one of the biggest things that struck me when I joined this project was how fierce of, uh, of, of a star we had in Amandla mm -hmm. and I can't wait for people to see uh, this character that she's built. Um, characters, can I say that? Yeah, you can. These characters <laughs> that she inhabited in two completely different ways and with such an, not only an emotional and spiritual, uh, you could see that she was taking an emotional and spiritual path into it, but also an intellectual path. I mean, I, I mean, when I stepped onto this project, I read, I read an essay that she had a couple essays that she had written about her characters and I've just never seen anybody approach anything that way and I I'm so excited for people to meet her and to see what this all is about I'd be blown away people are blown away.